Hey, gun people. Remember 9-11, 15 years later. Uh, geez, man, it seemed like yesterday. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple facts here. I don't want to turn this into a conspiracy thing about the, the Building 7 Tower. Uh, doesn't make sense, but it's just hard to ignore. But I just wonder if parents... I'm sure the school isn't teaching about 9-11 because it's probably considered racist now and you know facts are always considered racist when it doesn't fit the liberal agenda so why do we want to tell people that Muslims, the Islam religion of peace, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Taliban, you name it, uh, countries that support Islam and Muslim um, attacked this country and killed all these innocent people and did a great stinking job. Uh, so, you know, it's probably banned in most schools, and that's why I always say, you know, parents shouldn't let their kids grow up to be liberals, because they ignore facts, they ignore history, they forget things that make a country great or can destroy a country. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's all kind of haters on George Bush and whether it was planned, and, and, you know, I don't put a whole bunch past the government, but this Building 7 just doesn't make sense and uh, let me go ahead and start this well maybe I won't start it uh, it didn't give my little at 8.46 a.m. American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston with 92 aboard traveling at a speed of 470 miles per hour strikes the north tower of the World Trade Center complex within minutes officials coordinate the citywide emergency response their base of operations is a state-of-the-art command center located on the 23rd floor of 7 World Trade Center. Okay, now remember that. They set up a command center on the building that collapsed, yet all the important people got out of Building 7. With one tower in flames, the tragedy is only beginning. It is 9.03 when United Airlines Flight 175 with 65 aboard, traveling at the speed of 590 miles per hour, smashes into the south tower of the World Trade Center. This aircraft strikes the corner of the south tower. It rips a diagonally shaped gash from the 84th to the 78th floors. The south tower lasts only 56 minutes before it succumbs at 9.59 a.m. Now this tower collapsed straight down after 56 minutes and if you notice when that plane hit it it kind of hit the corner and when it started to fall you'll notice it leans to the left a little bit. Um, I think if they would have hit it lower it probably would have collapsed quicker. I'm not, I mean there's, there's conspiracy things and there's inconsistencies about molten lava and jet fuel can't make lava burn but uh, I'm not into the thermite that our government, as corrupt as it is, and how I don't trust it with every bone of my body, that they would kill all these people on their own land and expect people to keep that a secret, and how many people would have to be involved in this conspiracy and not one of them collected evidence, leaked, or did anything. I, it, it's just a hard thing for me to get over. So I know there's conspiracy guys that are convinced the government did this. I think the government knew. I think it should have known. I think it did some bad things, but... Um, let's go ahead and... The dust cloud billows outward for blocks. Victims stagger away. At 1028, the television mast atop the North Tower spears straight down. the collapse started, there really wasn't any way to stop it. it was well, I need to point this out for liberals. When that building's collapsing, there's hundreds of people dying instantly, and everybody on the plane was also killed, uh, despite that, you know, they probably called 911 and thought government was going to save them. Just going to go all the way down once it got started. This video is only a few minutes. I got another video that I want, and then there's an hour video that I want you to. I'll give you the link that I think is really good about the Pentagon. Try to sit down and watch it with your kids. Chaos in New York City. Power is down in Lower Manhattan. Phone lines jammed with more than 230 million calls. 
Angeles. Hundreds of firefighters trapped in the towers. Hundreds more raced to the scene. Falling debris from the collapse of the north and south towers. Okay, this is, this is the key point of this that I want to show in this video here. Uh, you notice the two towers that are collapsing, and they're going to do a little bit better Night's color. Nights fires code. in the neighboring buildings of the World Trade Center. World Trade 4, 5, and 6 are ablaze. World Trade 7, the building housing the city's command center, burns up. Okay, when you look at this picture, the two towers collapsed. There's a building here, there's a building here that wasn't damaged, there's buildings here on the other side of these buildings that weren't damaged. Yet the two towers collapsed and somehow fire got through this building to this building where they had command posts set up but suddenly were evacuated and nobody knows why and this building collapsed. Um, and they said it collapsed seven hours later. So for seven hours it was on fire and there was no smoke, no smoke alarms, people weren't scared, there was no indication that this building was in trouble before it collapsed. Uh, it, it just doesn't pass a smell test. Um, Unchecked for seven hours. At 5.20 it collapses. <laughs> emergency nerve center is destroyed somewhere in that time and it's very hard to keep track of time during this they had been ordered to evacuate number seven by the port authority to this day we don't know who gave that order but whoever it was saved a lot of people's lives okay so let me get this straight you've got a building that's been on fire for seven hours nobody knows why it was evacuated and you don't know who gave the order it was the command post where I believe Giuliani was in there conducting business. All the top heads of government were in there. It's a CIA headquarters. It's got all kind of... That building was a 47-story building, so it had a lot of offices in it. Somehow, and I don't know how many people died in that building, but somehow, someone, the government doesn't know who, gave the order to evacuate. They don't know why, and suddenly the whole building collapsed. Man, I mean, there are so many videos out there about architects disputing this that it's it, it just doesn't pass a smell test. But, I mean, people can draw their own conclusion. With New York a war zone, some residents walk across the Brooklyn Bridge to get out of the city. Others seek escape in vessels piloted by the Army Corps of Engineers. At 7.45 p.m., the New York Police Department says 78 officers are missing and estimates that 200 firefighters are dead. That number went up to 300 and something. At 10.56 p.m., police officials say they believe there are victims alive in the rubble of the World Trade Center. Working with urban search and rescue teams, there was a lot of... So, I mean, this gave a pretty good graphic um, display on why building seven is such a mystery and everybody's got all these questions and it's very easy to discount things like this but the 9-11 commission I mean I've got that book and I'm telling you everybody who was on that commission somehow rose to some type of power in the government some of them quit many of them over half said it was a scam and the government was obstructing it for Le Monica Lewinsky scandal with Clinton they did $60 million to investigate that scandal. And for the 9-11 for the, for the Commission, they only gave $15 million budget to investigate the largest terrorist attack on this country, the largest mass killing through a basic war on this country. They only gave $15 million. And the 9-11 Commission kept complaining, we don't have enough money to do this right. And they just want it done. Most investigations start within a week or two if they're going to do that. Uh, Kennedy assassination, Lewinsky, they, they all started very quickly. It took almost over 400 days before they decided to start the 9-11 Commission. Building 7 was the first building to be cleaned up, removed, and all evidence 
destroyed under the guise of it held classified stuff, so we need to get rid of it. Well, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I just it's just amazing uh, to um, in this video they show built just different. These are people who really think that Building 7, and again, I didn't want to turn this into conspiracy theory. I want to turn this into 9-11, trusting your government. Remember, all planes are gun-free zones. They're safe zones. The government has you protected. Don't worry about it. Just sit on the plane, and you'll be safe. And when people believe that, well, their fate usually ends up uh, in the hands of the government, which not a good place for me. This is Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper that fell on the afternoon of September 11. The government says that fire brought it down. However, 1,500 architects and engineers have concluded it was a controlled demolition. Over 6,000 of my fellow service members have given their lives. And thousands of my fellow first responders are dying. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a structural engineer. I'm a New York City correction officer. I'm an Air Force pilot. I'm a father who lost his son. We're Americans, and we deserve the truth. Go to RememberBuilding7.org today in the September 11th. The government says that... So, on this building, what, I, what never got me is I always notice that out of these windows, you see it what appears to be multiple explosions blowing out of these windows. And you see the dust coming out. And I've seen this in all the videos of it. Story skyscraper. See all these windows kind of... Now, some people are going to say, well, that's, the, that's the, the, the weight of the structure and they're bowing and they're popping. And that, that could be true. But I've seen a lot of demolition buildings, and this looks like a demolition. And for a building to burn for seven hours, and nobody knows it, and then somehow somebody, nobody knows who, gave the, who had authority because the building was evacuated, and the government is now claiming, you know, we did a great job because we evacuated the building, or there'd be a whole bunch more dead. Really? I, I just don't get it. ...that fell on the afternoon of September... All right, so this last video here, if you want to really watch, uh, this was on PBS, and they did a really, really nice job on the Pentagon. And I was I was always questioning whether Pentagon, because that's the most videotaped building around, they didn't have any video footage of the plane hitting it. And I always kind of like, you know, that just doesn't pass the smell test. Why? And remember, the government ran around and seized and collected all videos so they got to choose what they showed and what they didn't and nobody else had any video I mean they seized from gas stations to you name it they seized all the all the video evidence and all they gave us was a still shot of the Pentagon so the Pentagon always had a bad taste but this video here in 54 minutes kinda convinces me that it was probably a plane uh, although I'm not 100% convinced because I don't ever trust the government but they did a really nice job and if you watch this video, to see the emotion and the, the effects of uh, post-traumatic and to watch these people relive as they're telling these stories and the emotion comes through, it's, it's really a great 56-minute video. And I'll put the link in, in my um, description. You know, and I was the assistant building manager. Um, I was responsible from A to Z. Uh, lights on, uh, place warm. Just about anything you needed done at the Pentagon. We all went to our normal jobs. Shortly after, uh, my assistant came up to me and told me that I might want to come out and see what was going on. When the Trade Center towers were smoking uh, on the screen, and she had said it just got hit by an airplane. <laughs> I was at working at the firehouse that morning. We were having our uh, shift meeting, and uh, one of the guy's wife's calls and says that, uh, hey, something happened in New York. A plane flew into the World Trade Center. I grew up in New York, and I was like, well, planes aren't supposed to be flying near the World Trade Center. You know, it's just not in the flight path. So we turned the news on, and um, sure enough, you know, the building is, is on fire, and it was like, wow, that's insane. This is my third tour of duty in the Pentagon when I was a Navy captain. I was the special assistant to the vice chief of naval operations, who was the number two admiral in the Navy. This guy's a colonel. Uh, a captain in the Navy is the same as a colonel in the Air Force or Army. So he's what's called an 06. Uh, but this guy's been around and seen some stuff, and you can tell in his voice 
and and you see in this video where he's running around helping people and pulling people out with their skins falling off and he's explaining the chaos and the fight or flight and the, and the tunnel vision he explains that he couldn't he couldn't see anything I mean he just explains he doesn't know he's explaining classical fight or flight response for the human body but when they show him running around in actual footage in this video it's pretty classic demonstration of what happens in fight or flight when you go in to that high sense of alertness and I remember uh, most people remember where they were on 9-11 but me I was I was actually, I think I ran into one of the terrorists, and it pisses me off to this day, but I was transporting a child back from Maine that was uh, part of a child abduction, and we recovered the child, found it in Maine, and we had to go pick it up and bring it back. And so we were bringing it back, and in the airport, coming back, of course, I was armed, and when I travel armed, I have three, at least three guns on me, one on my ankle, one on my hip, and one on my carry-on luggage. So had I been on one of these planes, there would have been at least three guns. But these guys use box cutters and knives because guns weren't allowed because the government's going to make a plane a safe zone for you. Anyway, uh, I was coming back and we had to switch planes because they had a layover in Pennsylvania. And one of the planes supposedly was refueled in Pennsylvania to hit one of the towers. And I never went back and checked whether or not I w it was that plane or not. But it almost seems like fate to me to where it's like, holy cow, man, I could have been on that damn plane. But because the kid was young... We were traveling with a kid. They upgraded us and moved us to a different plane, even though it was a busy time of travel. So we flew back. When I get in Las Vegas and we land and we're in the airport, um, there is a, a peaceful Muslim running around screaming at the, at the teller. I'm standing here with a kid. Now, I'm armed. I'm traveling with a female who isn't armed, who's there to help, you know, kind of take care of the young child. And this guy is going off on the teller. I must get on this plane. I must get on. You cannot. And he's sweating and he's just being a freakazoid at the airport. And I'm just like, now remember, this was pre-9-11. So we weren't into this terrorist attack. We didn't realize that we were hated and enemy and they were coming. It just wasn't. Has, now that would happen and everybody would freak out. But at the time, when I saw that, I was like, I turned to the girl I was traveling with. And I said, you know what? If I didn't have responsibility as a kid right now, I'd be IDing that guy because he's up to no good and something's wrong. And they said some of the hijackers came through Las Vegas. I ended up calling the FBI, giving my tip. I don't know what they did with it or whatever. But anyway, it I, I definitely remember that. I came home. We got back at like 4 in the morning or something or, uh, I don't know, 6 in the morning. I was in bed. We got the kid back to the parents. I was tired. I was traveling. And my phone just blew up. And all my buddies were like, dude, we're getting attacked. And I go, What? He goes, man, we're getting attacked. Turn on the TV. And I'm like, what? So I was dazed, and I turn on the TV, and I saw when a second plane hit, and I was like, what the? So anyway, 9-11, um, remember it. Teach your kids. Uh, understand that, you know, history repeats itself. And if we don't teach our kids TV history, we can't give them the tools to the keep this country free in the way it should be. There's no navigational mal malfunction. The pilot can see where he's flying. The pilot knows exactly what he's doing. We knew that this was intentional from the beginning. Can you see guy about 4,000 feet, about 5 feet to right now? Looks like he's... Yeah, I see him. Okay, he's got a guy. Is he descending for the building also? He's descending really quick too, yeah. Five hundred miles an hour. I worked at the Boston Air Traffic Control Center. I was a military liaison. And after the second impact, remember one seventy five. The Patriot Act came after this. Really, really uh, bad, a, bad legislation. Uh, chaotic. The feeling of losing control to a controller is like those times just before you fall asleep and you feel. So, remember, the government's never going to pass up a crisis to seize power and to grow their government. The government's incompetence in this whole thing, the failure of the CIA, uh, NSA, all the spying that was occurring before, their failure 
was not attacked or looked at when 9-11 happened. What was attacked is the emotions of the people to say, let's go to war, let's go get the people that did it, who's to blame, it's not ever government to blame, let's go after the, the, the enemy who the government tells us is the enemy. And in the meanwhile, the government passes this massive legislation to seize huge amounts of power, to stomp on the constitutional freedoms, and just pass all kind of stuff that is, you know, which they were the problem, like always, and government's always willing to get more government to fix the problem that government creates. I feel like you're falling, and then you catch yourself, and it's... it's there was huge communication problems because they well, couldn't get... The military planes in the air. Sir, escalating big, big time. And we need to get the military involved with us. Wow, what's going on? Just get me somebody who has the authority to get military in the air now. All right. I believe it was close to 4,000 aircraft that were in the sky already. We had to coordinate each one individually. And after the two impacts, any aircraft... Okay, uh, this is a really good... I'll put the link in here. It'll be the one for PBS on the Pentagon building. Uh, I would highly recommend you, you, you sit down... Uh, have a drink, whatever, get with your kids and, and have them watch this about the chaos and panic and what 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 happened on 9-11 and uh, the pros and cons to government, trusting government, only giving government power, not controlling government, not making sure your government works for you uh, and, and realizing that government cannot protect you. No matter how big and how much power and how much money you give them, they're never going to be able to protect you. And when you give up your right to protect yourself, you are really just basically sending yourself to slaughter. All right, we'll end that there.